said one thing, but he actually wrote, said something else. It's, it's, and that was because he was in New Road, and they still had the side of the building. They've got some. Uh, they've got some roadworks and construction going on. So our usual parking spot on the other side isn't available to us. So we're parking on the uh, the, the, the side of the road closer to the uh, the city centre. Uh, but what that does that mean is the drivers are not really allowed to wait there um, more than a few minutes. So once we're there, we need to be ready to uh, jump off the bus as quick as we can, so Carl can uh, make his getaway. Uh, before he comes back to pick us up at that spot later on. So once we uh, once we're arriving, I'll we'll just ask you to make sure you're ready. But don't worry, I'll give you plenty of notice uh, before we arrive. So from when we get off the bus, um, we'll be on the uh, the quiet box systems with the earpiece, uh, and I will walk with you just a few minutes up to the one of the main squares. Uh, and then when we get there, um, I will show you where the meeting point is for the, uh, the, the the tour guides, for the guided tour later on. And that is also where you'll find uh, there's toilet facilities uh, in that square, public toilets, which are free of charge. Uh, there's a few little cafes to get something to eat, there's shops, and that's a good place to base yourself. And from there, we'll have a little bit of free time. Um, now, we're due to meet the guide. We've arranged to meet the guides at uh, 2 40, so uh, 20 to 3, 240, uh, and then the guided tour will take approximately uh, an hour, uh, so approximately one hour, um, before we then uh, meet back with Carl and uh, jumping back on the bus to continue on to the military cemetery, which isn't too far from, uh, from where we are departing from. So the, uh, there'll be two guides that we're going to meet at 240. Um, 
Uh, once again, you know, if you if you want to spend the whole time, um, you know, just enjoying the, the the center by yourself and making your own explorations, don't feel you need to come with the guide. Uh, but it is it is included. It's a nice uh, nice optional, uh, a nice chance for you to, to see um, some of the sites with the guide to. The range is quite good on these ones. Um, if it does get a little bit fuzzy, that means you're a little bit too far away from the guide. Um, not so much today, but in, when we go to some of the tours where you're going through castles and whatnot, if you're going through big uh, stone archways or around the corner, sometimes that can cut it out a little bit. So you just have to catch up with the, with the groups. The guide usually has a, a spare device with them as well, so if you have any issues, you just uh, report it to them. The uh, the charging docking stations, uh, as I say, are, are in your staterooms, uh, so just make sure you've got uh, a little box with two holes in it, and you pop the uh, the charger, the, you pop the device into the slot, and it'll come up amber, and that means it's charging, and when it comes on green, that means it's fully charged, and again, you can see the, um, the, the, the battery level and the site there. So we'll keep them off for the moment and we'll turn them on just as we get into Luxembourg before we get off the bus um, and then I'll guide you up to the main square before you have your period of free time. Just uh, and uh, on the list that Luxembourg is number two. Most of that comes from uh, banking and uh, the steel industry which was big over here. But it's uh, the city, the topography of the city, it's characterised by its uh, green river valleys and they cross, you can cross over a lot of those by well over a hundred bridges providing links between the, the historic and modern parts of the city. You'll see a little bit of that in the centre today. city is the, the, the tax, it's got quite low tax, um, so a lot of people come over here to, to make take the benefits of it, so um, for like uh, gasoline and alcohol and cigarettes, a lot of the people will cross over the borders into Luxembourg to make their purchases, because it's, uh, it's a lot cheaper than it is in France or Germany. Even though the tax is, a, is less, there's a lot more people that, that, that pay the tax. It kind of balances itself out from that aspect. But of the um, the population-wise, is uh, approximately 100,000 inhabitants there. 120,000 if you include the outer suburbs, and quite not that many of them are locals. Over 60% of uh, of, the, of that uh, population are, are foreigners um, coming in for the. Uh, so our business reasons, a lot of companies have based themselves in Luxembourg, which is why a lot of uh, uh, a lot of foreign um, outsiders have come in to make Luxembourg their home. One of the main, you will find that the majority of people there speak uh, English, but they do have their own language, uh, Luxembourgish, as uh, as the official language. Um, but English, German, French are all very, very, very commonly spoken. You'll find you learn all of those uh, in your school years. <coughs> of the European Union, and uh, after Malta, it's the, uh, the second smallest member of state of today's European Union. Uh, but nevertheless, it was uh, present at the birth of uh, United Europe, and along with uh, Belgium, Germany, France, Italy, and the Netherlands, um, it was one of the um, signatories of the Treaty of Rome in 1957. And the ensuing creation of the, the European Economic Community, 
uh, formed the nucleus for the, the later EU. And, uh, the city itself enjoys equal rights with uh, Brussels and Strasbourg as one of the three official EU capitals. Very influential place, power and money. As I mentioned, one of the main industries there is, is steel. Um, in 1952, it was the foreign ministers of the first European community, uh, the coal and steel community. Um, they chose Luxembourg as their uh, provisional headquarters. So that's where all our money comes from. Luxembourg has a high, quite a, a stable high income economy and uh, the result of this is low unemployment rates and low inflation. So as I said uh, it's quite heavily dependent on that international trade and it's, uh, the economy is based mainly around the banking, insurance, telecommunications and as I mentioned the steel which uh, dominates the industrial sector. Although they are diversifying including um, products such as uh, rubber and chemicals but steel is the main one. Since the 1970s, uh, the constant growth of the, the financial and the banking sector, that's kind of balanced out the decline of the, uh, the, the, the steel. So even if one goes down, the other's, the other's gone up. But even though it is one of the richest countries in Europe, bear in mind it's also one of the most expensive. So unless you're buying, as I mentioned, uh, gasoline, cigarettes or alcohol, <laughs> Everything else is a, a little bit pricey. 